All right, hello. Uh, so in this screencast, I just want to go through um, briefly how to set up um, our solvation free energy calculations for our lidocaine simulations. And so I promise this is much simpler than the equilibration runs. Okay. And hopefully um, your equilibration runs have finished uh, or will have finished prior to going through the setup of your free energy calculations because that final configuration from your equilibration runs will use as the starting structure um, for all of our free energy calculations. So I'm just going to open up the Pitzer cluster. Okay. Then I'm going to start by navigating to our group space. Okay. PMIU uh, 0170. Okay, then LS. I'm going to open up my MIU folder that I created last time. Okay, and so there's our lidocaine directory in there. And so then within lidocaine, um, I'm going to start with acetone. Okay. And so if I open up acetone, oop, <clears throat> we have our equilibration runs, which we set up last time. And now there's this new directory, FE calc. Okay, and I promise setting up our FE calculation is going to be rather easy. And I say that because if you think back to what we had to do for equilibration runs, um, we had a job submission script, we had an MDP file which told Gromax how to perform the calculations, we had a force field file, and we had a starting structure file. So in terms of the starting structure file, we're just going to copy that from our last equilibration run. We can use the same force field file, and then it's just a matter of these MDP and job submission scripts. But our MDP files, remember, don't tell anything about the system, so we can just use these for every single one of our systems. The only thing we might change is <clears throat> the name lidocaine. You might up, uh, update for the solute of interest. And then um, we're going to perform this set of calculations with um, essentially 15 total states, including that ideal gas phase, that zero state. So we're going to go from zero uh, to, in terms of the notes, M is 14. <clears throat> so 15 states to scale up those interactions. So we have 15 MDP files because we have 15 separate simulations and then 15 job submission scripts to run each and every one of those cases. Okay, so I'm going to vim the script FE setup. Okay, and so to show you essentially exactly what it's doing is it's just going to copy from our, NP, our second NPT equilibration run our force field file and then our final configuration will become our initial configuration. I make sure Gromax is loaded and then I just set up all 15 of our simulations, right? All that differs is they're all essentially going to use that same starting structure in which we have a fully interacting solute and solution. Um, so we'll look at the MDP file in a second. We'll have the same force field file and then they'll create a TPR and MDP file for running um, that is indicative of what state it is. Okay. Um, the one thing I'll mention about generating this initial structure, so the way we did it is we just equilibrated a system with the solute fully interacting in solution. So for these types of small solutes like we're looking at, you know, it's a lidocaine is a small solute, this works perfectly fine. Okay. Um, the other approach that you could take is in our equilibration runs, we could have had 15 separate equilibration runs in which we had um, a scaled solute in solution equilibrated all 15 of those cases and then use that as our starting structure. Okay, um, But from my past experience, just having that single solute um, for everything I've ever looked at works uh, perfectly fine. We'll just take the first small part of our trajectories as being additional equilibration for that particular state. Okay, And then what I have commented out here is the one thing uh, you may need to update is in my job submission scripts, just like last time it has my email address. Uh, now going in and manually editing all 15 files might be a little tedious. And so here's just a simple grep command. And so you can update this with um, your email and it'll go in to every single file in this directory, look for my email address and it can replace it with your email uh, if you put your email in there and on comment. Okay, so to get my job set up, it's just gonna be FE setup. Okay, bam, everything's set up. Okay, so I've got all my input files now. Okay, and then if I look at FE submit to give you an idea what it looks like, 
All right, all it's going to do is submit all 15 of these job submission scripts. All right, so it's not doing anything fancy. So then I'm just going to run fe submit. Okay, and everything <laughs> is submitted. I just set up and submitted 15 free energy calculations. Okay, now just to peek inside a couple of things before we move on to give you an idea of what's in there. Okay, is if I just view the submission script for job zero. Okay, it's going to look exactly like last time. All right, so I have it lidocaine acetone just like before, but I put an underscore zero, so I remind myself it's the um, <clears throat> zero um, subensemble or a state in our free energy calculations. The wall time I have increased now. So when I ran the, these acetone simulations before, they took about one hour. Okay, um, so that's about a factor of four larger than just our plain equilibration runs. Um, due to the jobs running longer and a couple of different things that we're doing uh, internally in the input file. Um, but then we load Gromax and we just run that one job. Okay, to peek inside one of our uh, imp input MDP files. Okay, in terms of the top part, in terms of the actual simulation, okay, the only thing that's really changing is, remember, you need to use a local thermostat okay, to make sure we're properly um, regulating the temperature of that solute molecule in the state when it's decoupled. Okay? And it also helps when it's nearly decoupled, just making sure um, that the solute's at the correct temperature. And so instead of the MD integrator, we use SD, the stochastic dynamics integrator. Um, and so we'll set the temperature um, later on, but SD will act as a local thermostat and give us the proper behavior that we want. Okay, so now I'm going to run for five and a half nanoseconds a little longer. Okay. There's a note here that this frequency to write energies to disk um, I've now made smaller than it was for the equilibration runs. And that's only because that's a frequency which, which I'll be um, essentially performing these fictitious perturbations. And so I need to calculate this anyway, so I might as well um, record the energy as well. Okay, but our neighbor scheme's the same. I have all our cutoffs uh, the same. Okay, and I note if you're using an older version of Gromax, um, back in, I believe it was 4.6, uh, Verlay still didn't work with free energy calculations, uh, but now it does, which means we can perform our free energy calculations even faster, okay, which is awesome. In terms of um, our thermostat and barostat, so our thermostat now is implied uh, by the SD integrator, stochastic dynamics, um, so I don't need to specify uh, thermostat, but I'll keep that friction constant the same. Well, this is my tau t, my coupling temperature time. Uh, now, essentially, it's uh, inverse of a friction constant for stochastic dynamics. So one thing that's not necessary, um, but I'll generate all the initial velocities since we're taking our structure with a fully interacting solute and applying it to all lambda states. And then for each you know, state, really not necessary, I give it a different initial seed. Uh, 100 for uh, state 0, uh, so all the way up to state 14 would be 114. And then what's new is this part at the bottom, okay, free energy control. And let's see if I can get it all on one screen. Okay, yeah. So basically, <clears throat> the commands that we have added is free energy calculation, yes, we're going to want to perform a free energy calculation. Okay, then these three lines control our soft core potential. Okay, so this is our SC alpha um, and then R power. And so uh, you can see those in the equations uh, in the notes and then also in our PowerPoint. Um, SC power, um, we don't mention or introduce, so we just keep that at one. So remember, um, we use the special underscore uh, FE dot out force field file for lidocaine. Um, and so in that, the molecule is called S out. And that's the case in all of my underscore FE um, you know, FF or force field files. So, um, so again, for like lidocaine, there is a lidocaine underscore shake dot ITP, and there's a lidocaine underscore shake underscore FE dot out. That underscore FE reminds me that in that file, the molecule is called S out. Okay. Now, this one we have to define our initial lambda state. So you can think of your lambda state, your sub ensemble, um, or you know your state indexing from zero, which is our ideal gas, up to fully interacting. So we're going to start in state zero, okay, our non-interacting, but this would change for all 14 of those simulations. If you were to look at another one of those input NMVPs, um, this would just change 
Um, so it would be 1 for state 1 all the way up to 14 for state 14. Okay. Now we need to define our states. Okay. So first we're going to define our um, lambda equals 0 state, so our 0th state. So in our 0th state, um, lambda is going to be equal to 0 corresponding to um, no LJ and no electrostatic intermolecular interactions between the solute and solvent. So lambda is our scale factor, so essentially we've turned off solute and solvent intermolecular, intramolecular interactions. <clears throat> then defining lambda equals 1, so this is going to be state 14 in which we have our fully interacting solute in which we're going to have full van der Waals and electrostatic interactions. And then we tell it we don't want to couple our intramolecular degrees of freedom, uh, don't touch them. Okay? So we're only scaling intermolecular interactions, not intramolecular interactions. And then here, for van der Waals lambda and van der Waals, or Coulomb lambdas, we just need to def um, specify then the lambda, <coughs> our um, van der Waals lambda and our, van our electrostatic lambda for each state. Okay, and so remember lines begin with semicolons or comments, so I try and set it up here. So I, you know, label it as state um, 0 through 14, and then that's my van der Waals lambda and electrostatic. So in state 0, both are 0. Uh, non-interacting solute. State 14, right, they're both one fully interacting. So first we scale up our Leonard-Jones interactions to full strength, keeping our electrostatic interactions turned off. Then our LJ interactions stay at full strength, and we scale up our electrostatics. Okay, but that's pretty much it. So this is just, <clears throat> uh, you know, calculating the, that delta U term, right, that we saw for um, uh, perturbation theory in bar. So if we had a value of, uh, I believe it's 1, uh, it would calculate the delta U for neighboring states. Here I have it as negative 1, calculate the change in U for you know, the state with every other state. This will allow us to perform calculations with M bar uh, as well, which we can talk about in class. And then this just sets the frequency um, for essentially performing those fictitious perturbations and calculating the energy. And that's what's the same as this NST energy uh, up here. Okay. That's it. We'll talk more about these in class. So let me exit out of here and then show you <clears throat> how easy it is to set up the other ones. So I'm going to go to diethyl ether, FE calculations. Okay. And so if I just were to look at, ah, you know, say script zero, I've already gone through and updated um, this. This is lidocaine diethyl ether. So to get this set up, um, and then, okay, one last point is, remember my submission script has my email. To update it to your email, you can uncomment out the script line and update with your email address. But to get it set up, it's just FE setup. Everything's set up right, FE submit. Okay. Cool. If you get an error message in terms of setting up your free energy calculations, so in terms of order of diagnosing, um, it might check to make sure that um, all the names are as they're supposed to be, that we don't have a typo or anything anywhere. Um, but in this case, um, where essentially I've created these for you and they should be right, um, if you get an error message, it'd be more so that something went wrong with your equilibration run um, or your equilibration run just didn't finish, so it doesn't have that final structure file. And so we'd actually need to go back and look at your equilibration run to see if it finished, uh, or if we had some sort of error where it crashed and burned, where maybe it um, wasn't set up correctly. So um, again, um, based on uh, simulations I had run for acetone, I would expect that these take about four times longer to run uh, than your plan equilibration runs. Okay, and with that, so if I go to view my jobs in the queue, all right, so I just submitted uh, 60 jobs, so 15 salvation free energy calculations for lidocaine in each solvent. All right, it looks like you know they're doing a pretty good job getting up and running. Okay, and so with that, uh, I will end uh, the screencast and we'll talk more in class.